beautiful faces. If uh, Jesus were to come right now, it would be the best, right? <laughs> the perfect timing. But uh, that's not always the case. So let's always be ready, right, uh, in all moments. So whatever we're going through in our lives, that we can always have God in our hearts first, right? So let's, uh, let's prepare our hearts this morning for service and worship with silent prayer. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, we praise your name, Holy Father. You are our Father God, Holy One, who is full of love and grace for us. Lord, may we place you first in our lives, in our minds, and our hearts, above all else, Lord. It's very easy in our busy daily lives that things become a background noise. But may we always put you first, Lord. May we always think of you. May we always uh, live for you, to glorify you, and to praise your holy name. Please bless this service today, Lord. Bless all aspects that we can lift it up to glorify your name. Please bless Pastor Mark and his message. I mean, you really speak... Uh, through him, with full of spirit, Lord. And may we all worship in spirit together and accept your word today. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, let's all rise. First of all, welcome every one of you who come from near or far or online. Let's sing for the glory of God. Uh, before we sing the song, I, will, I just want to give a heads up that we're going to sing three songs for the opening today, so don't sit down after the second song. All right? Okay. Ready? I need 
have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning. The cross before me. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. Christ is Lord. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. No, no. 
so privileged to pray for our church today. <clears throat> Let's bow our hearts. Most holy and gracious Heavenly Father, our loving Lord Jesus and great, great comforter Holy Spirit, you are our glorious triune God. I love you so much. You are my glorious Father. You deserve all the praise, the thanksgiving, honor, and glory. Thank you, Father, for healing this leper 47 years ago so that I could rise and go to pioneer several campuses. And with the gift of faith, I went and for your glory. Yet it is not I, Lord, but the gift of grace and apostleship you have given me who made me who I am. And I have not done enough yet, Lord, so please help me to continue to do your will as a Bible teacher and mother of prayer. Thank you, Father. 
hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Thank you for adding another soul this week to nurture in your life-giving word. Make me a good steward for the flock that you have given me. Help me to really pray and love them and nurture them. Lord, Father God, we pray for the <coughs> uh, uh, vision uh, to use our missionary church to raise short-term and long-term missionaries to save 3.2 3, 3 billion souls that have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ because the harvest is plentiful. Please bless the persecuted church in Pakistan. I pray, Lord, calm down the persecution, protect the gospel workers there, beginning from missionary P. Kang and his wife Grace to a victorious faith. And you may also use native pastors there, such as Deborah, Moses, and Paul. Heavenly Father, I pray for our upcoming Founders' Day celebration this Friday. Bless our um, celebration with a joyful and thankful celebration, together with Dr. Lee's family and Mandy Berry. Thank you for Dr. Samuel Lee and missionary Sarah Berry, beautiful love for you the cornerstone of our church, which bore much fruit for your glory 60 years later. Father, I pray for also the upcoming uh, missionary mission trip to Asia by Pastor Ron, Shepherdess Debla, Mission David, and Joy Kim. May you equip them with your protection, provision, make them a source of blessing, to our frontline missionaries through their prayerful visiting and mutual edification fellowship. Father, I pray for our Ukraine, uh, <clears throat> our coworkers there. Give them victorious faith to overcome the situation in the land and end the war and bring peace through your mercy and love. May God protect our brothers and sisters and their families as well in that country. May God comfort them, strengthen them through the word of God and have victorious faith. Father, may you put your healing hand to all many coworkers who are sick. Give them complete healing and new life. Father, I now uh, pray for uh, you to turn our hearts and minds and soul toward you as we listen to your message to us through your anointed servant, Pastor Mark. May your word be sweet music to our heart, mind, and soul, and preserve our lives, Lord, according to your living word. Help us to live for your glory every day, for your glory, honor, and praise. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's all stand and recite the Lord's Prayer together. Okay. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please have a seat. Let's uh, read our passage today. It is Luke chapter 17 from verse 20 to 37. We'll be reading from the ESV. Let's read this responsibly. I'll begin, and you can read with Elizabeth. Being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, The kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed. Nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there. For behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. And he said to the disciples, the days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look there, or look here, 
Do not go out or follow them. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, let the one who is on the housetop with his goods in the house not come down to take them away. And likewise, let the one who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. I tell you, in that night there will be two in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding together. One will be taken and the other left. And they said to him, Where, Lord? He said to them, Where the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Now we'll have our message by Pastor Mark. Happy Sunday, everyone. Enjoying a beautiful October 1st? Wow. Happy October. So we're also blessed in so many ways, um, especially we're really, I believe we're all really blessed to have the chance to study Luke's gospel this fall. What an amazing book of the Bible. Let's ask God to come and bless this morning's Bible study. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus. Thank you that he is able to heal us, to cleanse us of our uh, hideous sins. He is able to make us fully uh, restored. Help us to know and remember his grace and come humbly to him to give him thanks. Lord, whatever is going on around us, fill us with this spirit of thanksgiving that it can really bless uh, all the people around us. Thank you, Lord, for your life-giving words. We come to you today, Lord, in need of you, in need of your word. Lord, may the Holy Spirit come and be our teacher. Draw us closer to Jesus through this Bible study. Lord, I'm nothing but a sinful man. Cleanse me with his blood and grant me your spirit to speak your words. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Today's title is When the Son of Man is Revealed. When the Son of Man is Revealed. And our key verse today is verse 30. Let's read verse 30 together. Okay? So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So, we like to start with an opening question. And today's question is, can people around you tell what's going on inside you? Hmm. Some people are good at hiding their thoughts and emotions. Others wear their hearts on their sleeve. People can immediately read their faces. Which kind are you? In today's passage, Jesus continues his theme in chapter 17, focusing on what's going on in his disciples' inner lives. So far, he's taught them to be serious about their own sin, to be forgiving toward others by faith, and to live with the attitude of unworthy servants. When Jesus heals ten lepers and only one humble Samaritan leper comes back to him, the disciples get to see firsthand what wholehearted, thankful faith 
looks like. Now in today's passage, Jesus teaches them the hope they'll need in order to live as his servants in this godless world. What is this hope? Why is having this hope so important for disciples? And how does it impact our lives? May God open our hearts and speak to us personally through his living words. Let's look at our first verse today, verse 20a. Being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come. Here they are again. From the beginning, the Pharisees have been critical of Jesus and his ministry. Though they knew a lot about the Bible, they declined to be baptized by John the Baptist. They avoided any personal repentance. Jesus called them hypocrites. He said they focused on appearances instead of on what's in the heart. Jesus made them so mad, they were lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say. They criticized Jesus for not keeping the Sabbath to their standards. They criticized him for eating with sinners. They even ridiculed him for his teaching about money. This time, they ask when the kingdom of God would come. In the context of all their hostility, it's unlikely that this question is sincere. So what's their point? At that time, the Jews were waiting for the kingdom of God to come. They thought it would be an awesome day when God would send his Messiah, overthrow all his enemies with his mighty power, and establish his righteous kingdom. Jesus' ministry didn't really look like that. Yes, Jesus was preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. But to these Pharisees, his ministry to outcasts And sick people looked weak and foolish. How does Jesus answer them? He says in verses 20 and 21, The kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed. Nor will they say, Look, here it is! Or, There! Jesus knew exactly how the Pharisees thought. Earlier he had cast out a demon from a mute man, but the Pharisees kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. They demanded Jesus to perform signs from heaven to prove that God's kingdom was coming through him. This idea of the Pharisees spread to ordinary people who also wanted more and more signs. This is why in earlier chapters in Luke, Jesus rebuked the people for not repenting and believing in him based on the mighty works he had already done. It's also why he rebuked the crowds for being good at interpreting the weather forecast, but totally unable to interpret the present time. What does Jesus want us all to see? Let's read verse 21b together. Okay? For behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. He's saying God's kingdom is here, right in front of us. What does he mean? He's referring to himself. Yes, the kingdom of God is going to come someday. But in fact, Jesus himself is the kingdom of God. 
His presence in the midst of us gives us all access to the kingdom of God right now. It's why he said earlier, but if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Not will come, has come upon you. The Greek expression for come upon you means it's already arrived. This spiritual truth still applies today. If we repent and believe in Jesus, God's kingdom comes upon us now. Christ comes to dwell in our hearts through faith, the Bible says. We experience Christ in us, the hope of glory. We get a foretaste of glory divine, of what God's kingdom is going to be like in eternity. When we repent and turn back to God, Jesus fills us with God's grace and he refreshes our souls. Instead of looking for signs and calculating about the future, it's so much better to experience Jesus right now. But it doesn't mean our lives suddenly become problem-free. Let's read verse 22 together, please. And he said to his disciples, The days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. What does he mean? Jesus is referring to the time after his death, resurrection, and ascension, but before his second coming. Later in Luke's gospel, he's going to say a lot more about those days. He predicts that there will be spiritual imposters, wars, natural disasters, persecutions, great distress, and perplexity. Basically, those days are really hard. Around the world, believers are going through such days right now. Jesus says quietly here, you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man. Meaning the time when he comes again. As we endure the hardships in following him, we long for his return as he promised. But these days of suffering make believers vulnerable to false hopes. So let's read verse 23, please. And they will say to you, look there, or look here, do not go out or follow them. These people are claiming they have some secret knowledge about Jesus coming back. They play on Christians' fears and desires for relief. Our Lord Jesus clearly says to us not to go out or follow after such people. How can we know when Jesus is really coming back? He tells us in verse 34. Let's read it together. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. Earlier, he told his disciples that the Son of Man will come in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Here, he says, it will be like lightning that flashes and lights up the whole sky. The point is, his coming will not be secretive. It's going to be sudden and obvious to everyone on earth. We don't have to worry about missing it. 
Instead, we better be concerned about being ready for it. How can we be ready? Let's read verse 25. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Why does Jesus add this here? He knows our common human desire for glory without suffering. We'd like to all jump into the glory of Jesus coming as quick as possible and get us out of any suffering. So he says it here plainly. We always have to go through suffering and rejection before we can enjoy future glory with him. Jesus, our Lord, set the example for us. He calls us all to follow in his steps. Suffering and rejection first. Not a popular message, but a disciple's lifestyle. If we're truly following Jesus in the way of obedience to God's will, the way of suffering and rejection, then we're ready for his coming at any time. Jesus goes on to say more about that day. Let's read verses 26 and 27. Okay? Just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Jesus first reminds us of the flood in Noah's day. Just as God's judgment came on people suddenly, so this will happen when Jesus comes again. He adds that people in Noah's day were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage. These activities are all normal, not inherently sinful. The problem is, People filled their lives with these physical things and had no room in their hearts and no real interest in God himself. As God's people, it's hard to live among those who ignore him and only enjoy physical life. It's hard not to be influenced. Jesus warns us about such an inner life so that we won't be drawn into it. And he adds another example for emphasis. Let's read verses 28 and 29, please. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. This time the destruction came through fire and sulfur. But the people were just the same as in Noah's time. It says they were eating and drinking. In the city of Sodom, they also were buying and selling, planting and building. Again, these activities are not inherently sinful. But people were so preoccupied with their own business, they had no time for God himself. They didn't think that being obsessed with their own business mattered. But God saw all that was going on in people's hearts. And God's righteous judgment came upon them just as suddenly as it did in Noah's day. Let's read verse 30. So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. This word revealed implies that people have no idea that it's coming. 
But when his glory is revealed, most people are going to be caught totally unprepared. And it's going to be tragic. As in the days of Noah and of Lot, there will be no more chances to escape, no more chances to repent. Why does Jesus say this? He wants us to believe his promise that he's going to come again to bring God's final judgment on this sinful world. He wants us to believe this promise. He's not emphasizing doing anything outwardly. He's telling us to believe what he's saying. Also, Jesus wants us to be aware of what the day is going to be like. The day of Jesus, the Son of Man, will be glorious. The day of Jesus will be obvious. The day of Jesus will be sudden. And the day of Jesus coming again is going to be the most dreadful day for all those who ignored God and chose to rebel against him. Jesus says more. Let's read verses 31 through 33. Please. On that day, let the one who is on the housetop with his goods in the house not come down to take them away. And likewise, let the one who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. Here, Jesus has a main point. He's telling us to be inwardly detached from our material possessions. When he comes, we're not going to be able to take anything in this world with us anyway. On that day, all the little treasures we have are going to turn out to be junk. Frankly, Attachment to material things is idolatry. It's why Lot's wife looked back at Sodom, disobeying God's instructions, and turned into a pillar of salt. Jesus wants us to remember this lesson, to keep our hearts in him and in the promise of his kingdom, not in the things of the world. Again, inner life. What's really in our hearts? He wants us to simply depend on God, not on money or possessions. Having such inner faith is also how we can be ready for his coming at any time. Jesus concludes with two more haunting images. Let's read verses 34 and 35. I tell you, in that day there will be two in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding together. One will be taken and the other left. In both of these cases, each person was doing exactly the same thing as the other outwardly. Sleeping. Grinding. So what makes them different? Surely, it's their inner lives. One person is living with faith and hope in Jesus and in his coming. The other has no spiritual life at all. Human beings often cannot tell the difference, but Jesus can. He knows our inner life. He knows exactly what's in our hearts. He's looking for faith in him, love for him, hope in him. Just living with other believers is not going to be enough. Our hope in Jesus 
has got to become genuine and personal. We cannot fake it. Why is Jesus saying all these things? He wants us, as his disciples, to live with a different inner life. While waiting for him, he wants us not to get sucked into the ways of the world, engrossed in physical life and personal business. He wants us not to be anxious about worldly things, but to live a faithful spiritual life in undivided devotion to him. We need to guard our hearts to live with this faith and hope in Jesus. Let's read our key verse, verse 30 again. So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. May God help us live with this glorious hope in our hearts. May God help us not become engrossed in physical life, material things, or our own business. May God help us be ready at any time for the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. We are so weak. Our physical life can take over. The things of the world can pull us away. Help us, Lord, to hold on to your promise of the day when the Son of Man will be revealed. Lord, you promised it will be a glorious day when you take your precious servants back to be with you. And it will be a horrible day for those who were left. Lord, help us to repent and believe and taste this glorious kingdom in you right now through the work of the Holy Spirit. Help us to live ready for your coming, awake or asleep or whatever we're doing. Lord, let these words remain in us and bear good fruit for your kingdom. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. It's time to respond to God's word. Let's all rise and sing hymn number 279 together. They seem small, our trials are hard to bear. We are tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. All tears forever in this eternal day, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face, all sorrow will we raise. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Sometimes the sky looks dark, will not a ray of light. We are tossed in the river, no man help inside, but there is one in heaven. Who knows our deepest care? Let Jesus Christ, so we are all, just go to Him in prayer. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, 
Oh, sorrow will we reign, so bravely run the race till we see Christ. Life's days will soon be o'er, all storms forever past. We'll cross the great divide to glory safe and land. We'll share the joys of heaven, a harp of home a crowd. The tempter will be banished, we'll lay our burdens down. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials we seem so small. When we see Christ, one glimpse of His dear face, all sorrow will be raised. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Please remain standing. Let's uh, praise Jesus with uh, our praise team. Are you ready for the second coming of Jesus? Amen. 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 Let's sing this song together.
it's a time of, for offering. So as you know well, so there are two ways to uh, give thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise Jesus who uh, gives us a message and warning that we may examine our hearts and see what we have. Father, we are very engrossed and preoccupied with many worldly things. But please, remove all those things as we repent of our attachment to the world and material things and fill our hearts with your glorious hope of a second coming, love for you, and also absolute faith in you. Father, we really ask you to help us to be ready, well prepared for your second coming, also use us, also uh, help others to be prepared. Father, we offer small uh, thanksgiving to you because of your grace. Please accept it, especially our heart, and use it for your glory, for your uh, people. Father, we love you, and we thank you so much for your grace and mercy. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'll give you a short uh, prayer topics and on announcement. So based on today's message, let's really ask God to examine our hearts and fill our hearts with the hope, glorious hope of his second coming. And also let's really pray that we can le learn to repent of all our uh, worldly desires and attachment to the world so that we can be filled with joy, hope, faith uh, in Jesus Christ. Also, uh, as Pastor Mark uh, shared uh, with us on how to be ready. Do we love Jesus enough to suffer? Yes. Yeah. And also, let's really share the gospel of full gospel. Usually people share the gospel of God's love. God loves you, God loves you. That's true, but also the, the gospel message includes Jesus' second, second coming and eternal judgment as well. So let's really pray that God may use us to share the full gospel with the people around us. Do you think your parents are ready for Jesus' second coming? How about your children? How about your friends or your spouse? Please share the gospel with them, okay? Next slide. So ne next week we'll learn, uh, next uh, passage, always to pray and not lose heart. So while waiting for Jesus' second coming, so we must learn to pray, okay? So next slide. So we'll have Founders Day uh, celebration this coming Friday, this Friday, not next Friday. So, so we'll begin from 7 p.m. So I put one, one, two words, come early. So we are very notorious to come on time, but come early and be good hosts, okay? So please pray for uh, Pastor Ron for his message also four uh, also, uh, speakers. And next slide. So we had a 27th English online forum. So I believe most of you attended it, this forum, right? No? Only Michelle Manika? So for those who haven't, so uh, there is a video. So you can go to uh, UBF TV and watch all the recordings one by one, okay? And next slide. So, uh, CBF Fellowship is preparing a family discipleship workshop next Saturday, uh, 3 p.m. at church. So all families are welcome and urged to att uh, attend. Urged to attend, that's very important, okay? Please uh, come and join uh, this important uh, workshop. Next slide. So we have announced that there will be a 
joint Christmas worship service, right? So some, uh, December 17th at Regina Dominican High School and with the theme of God's love. So please pray for message and drama as well. Also, we are inviting our uh, uh, some local chapter friends. Please pray for uh, that too, that all of us can celebrate Jesus' birth together. Next slide. So here, is, uh, here are very short uh, updates for campus ministry. So HBF will have a fall outreach on October 21st. Also, there are several uh, seniors, Hannah and Andrew Albright, also Jane, Deborah, and Sammy, and Nehemiah. So they are applying for co uh, to college. Please pray for them, okay? Also, so please pray for Loyola. So they are preparing uh, for uh, reg a registration of their club, unbounded club. So their due day is October 6th. So they have two officer candidates, but they need one more. So please pray for Loyola uh, club registration. Also Lincoln Park, they have had several faithful wontons and also new wonton Bible studies. So NEIU have, uh, had, has uh, had several group Bible studies and they are praying that at least one faithful disciple can be raised from each Bible, uh, by a group Bible study. Also, uh, NU, please pray for their outreach, okay? Also, Oakton, wow, the work of God is going on there. Several uh, young people have joined a Friday, weekly Friday meeting, and they have shared their testimonies. Amazing. Please pray for uh, those growing uh, disciples. Also, uh, UIC really uh, has been blessed by God, and young Students have led group Bible studies. Also, uh, every Wednesday, they have student uh, uh, dinner. Thank God for co-workers who have served them uh, sacrificially. And also today, there will be picnic, okay? If you want to come, even, even if you may not uh, be a UIC student, please come. Mission portion is gracious. And also, uh, Columbia College pioneering is going on. So one Bible students came and had Bible study. So please pray for uh, Shepherd Victor, Pastor Mark, and also me, that we may really have a club there too. And uh, here are some uh, pictures. So left side top, the, uh, one of uh, NEIU group Bible study, and also right side, UIC Wednesday lunch. And the bottom, uh, to Paul, Lincoln Park, I, I remember, a student welcome party. And that, uh, the last one is uh, Loyola apple picking. Wow, amazing. Next slide. Wow, amen. So, Luna, Elvin, Diaz, born to Michael and Anna, and Diaz. So beautiful. So please pray for her and her sister. They may get along with each other. <laughs> and also, uh, World Mission Prayer Topics, Pastor Ron and also Pastor John attended the Missio Nexus Conference. So. It, was, it is a very important conference. So UBF has uh, a part of it from 2012. Uh, uh, so it's a really uh, important conference. Thank God that uh, they represented, represented the UBF. Also, uh, please pray for uh, mission trip of Pastor Ron and also Mission Joy Kim's family to first Mongolia, India, Sri Lanka, and Indonesia. Okay, next slide. So upcoming events, I think you know most of, of, of them, but the second one, Korean Tech Conference. So it will be October 16th through uh, 18th with the theme of maturity, maturity. So this conference is the first conference uh, really by new uh, Korean uh, UBF director, 
Shepherd Nehemiah. So please pray for him and all Korean staff to attend and grow mature. Okay? And next slide. So there are several articles uh, I could not really put here. So for example, uh, one missionary from uh, Almaty, Kazakhstan, he was baptized and he, would be sent, he will be sent out as a missionary. But I couldn't mention his name. Also, please pray for several co-workers uh, in uh, Pakistan. They have been uh, persecuted. Also, there, are two, uh, there were two weddings, first in Germany and Russia. So you can read all these uh, stories in uh, UBF newsletter. Okay? So members uh, all received the email. Please read very carefully. So let's pray for uh, those who need uh, healing and hope. So this is all I uh, prepared. So now let's all stand up and recite Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church Universal, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's sing together benediction song. Please remain standing. Please be seated and pray with your neighbors. Thank you.